These are the ELAC Debut Reference 6.2. And no one sent them to me, and no one asked me to review them. I just bought them on Amazon. I was like, all right. I haven't done ELAC in a while. Everyone seems to like them. Andrew Jones designs for them. And then I did the review before this review. I did like the first take. And I was so distraught that like I couldn't verbalize like my feelings on these speakers. So I stopped, made a grilled cheese, American cheese, I am sorry. Took a little more listening time and now I'm ready. I don't like these speakers. And it's not that they do anything bad. I mean, I'm sure someone's going to get them and just be like, holy fuck, these are the best. These could definitely be the best speakers you've ever heard. But. And yes, they're upside down because I had to try something. But. There's something about Andrew Jones' speakers. And there's something about Elax in particular. That just don't ring with me. They're, they're, they're pretty... They're, they're beautiful with the covers on. Like, here, look. Look at this thing. It's got the finish of, like, an old, worn-out deck. I got the, the oak set, so it's, like, a lighter color. But it sort of reminds me of, like, like wood on a deck that's been sitting out and you haven't taken care of it. And it also, the texture on the side is the thickest texture I've ever felt on, like, fake wood vinyl. Like, this is, this is real wood on the Heresies. This is, like, legit real wood. And this is smoother than this. This is like really going for it. And I got the um, the set that's lighter in color because uh, they have black face and darker tone or white face and lighter tone. And these are almost sold out. So I'm like, all right, I'll try these. And I don't think I like the color I picked either. Because, I mean, with the grills on, with the tweed gray grills, it's kind of like, that's fine. Like, it looks fine. But you spend $600 on a speaker, you want to take the cover off. And the problem with these is when you take the cover off... <sighs> okay. What's throwing me off about the looks on these is you got this silver uh, hex pattern, like honeycomb, over a one inch soft dome with a waveguide around it that the waveguide's been reintroduced and all this is all to make the pattern better and then you got the six and a half down here and it's just it's a standard looking six and a half and then they put why would you put the black ring around it like on the other black speakers the ver other version and then have exposed hardware it's a 600 dollars set i got speakers on my wall worth less than 200 dollars. the yamo uh, s803s they don't show the hardware. So there's something about having like white and silver and black, and it's just, uh, it doesn't make my pee pee hard at all. And it's, it's even weird when you look at the black version because this is still silver and then this is black and this is black. So it's just like a, that pops out again. Um, slot load fl flunt, flunt port, I'm making new words up as I stumble flared slot port if you watch my unboxing channel which is a different channel from this channel where I, everything that i get in this channel to review it's come out and i touch it for the first time the way they designed this speaker was from here to here is a box with a hole drilled in the back of it a big hole then they cut out this like weird like horseshoe shape glued it to the bottom and they put another panel on the bottom and then they have this flared it goes basically in and then flares out around the thing so you have this wonderful front port that makes these speakers the easiest speakers in the world to carry because you can just stick your fingers in here not fuck with the finish and then grab the connectors in the back which we should took turn it around ow these are only um single set of binding posts you can't separate tweeter and mid-range and i kind of would like to because i'd love to hear them separately because i think one of the reasons i don't really enjoy these speakers for listening purposes is because that tweeter's just doing something let's pull these back in they're nice binding posts but there's only two it's another thing i kind of expected for 600 dollars speakers to give me two I'll spin you back around Spin you right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby. You see, I picked that wallpaper before I had actually decided 
um, final thoughts on these speakers. And she's holding a little heart. But she's an anime girl and she's fake. And that's what this is. These, these speakers, plural, feel like a very competent set of studio monitors. Self-powered, no, no fun, all business studio monitors that produce incredible detail. And uh, extend to like 44 hertz easily with the slot load port. And deliver sound. And every time I have them on, I'm gonna cover that one again. Every time I have them on and I'm just not in front of them, if I'm in the kitchen here playing with my uh, roasted garlic bagel crisps and there's music playing. <music> Dare to be stupid by Weird Al. You know what it was. You knew what it was. It's like, oh, I want to hear this. And then somehow it's that Shure 1540 effect. They're a $500 carbon fiber headphone made by one of the best audio companies in the world. And you put them on and it sounds boring. Why are you boring? Why are you boring? This is one of the only speakers that Chewbacca is startled by. Because if you've, if you've known from, if you've been watching my, if you know the canon of Z reviews, um, Chewbacca will usually stare at speakers that can really get the detail going. She'll like look up at them and like, like if there's like a drum solo and there's a cymbal playing, like she'll, she'll get her cat senses will come out and she'll like, oh, what's that? And on several occasions, she's literally jumped from the sounds he's produced. Which should mean they're great. And I, I, I can't knock, I can't knock a lot of things about these speakers. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reluctantly probably tell you you could look at them, but this is not my sound. I spent the money on it. There ain't no bias here. I'm gonna sell them in the yard sale for a loss. By the way, yard sale. First to the tenth of every month. If you join the Patreon and subscribe star. Um, these. These speakers, a, 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 did I even get to the point where I don't like the way that looks? Like, I just, I just don't. Like, with the covers on, they're fine. With the covers off, I don't know, something just doesn't sit right with me. And then you start playing music, and I've been racking my brain for a bit here. And I think they don't quite image as well as I'd like them to. Like, from left across to right and maybe a little bit beyond. What they do is very good intense sound there. Very good intense sound there. And then a center image that's like six feet back or up and back. Like they're doing, the, I just played Yossi Horikawa's letter, which has a song where he starts writing with the pen, pencil and you could hear the scratching as it goes across. And it should, and I know this from um, testing it on like, I don't know, 45 pairs of speakers and 100 headphones. It should sound like it's going left to right perfectly evenly. That's, that's, the, that's the goal. That's the goal of imaging is to have it go delineate exactly here. And on this pair of speakers, no matter how far apart I have them, no matter what the angle is, no matter what amplification I use, it does left, 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 left. It should be moving left, 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 center. And then it's sort of like maybe here somewhere, right? That's poor imaging. And they're a $600 speaker and the tweeter has been all redefined and it's like, that shouldn't, that shouldn't image poorly. And I've been trying to use them for just like, not just music, but everyday things. And they're perfectly fine for everyday things. YouTube videos, I'm watching you know, streamers, this is fine. Put on a movie. They're not bad for a movie. I wish I had a center channel so that the dialogue wasn't coming out of here, but it's, it's, it's fine. They have a, an air of quality about them that is certainly at their price point of $600. If, if this is the best speaker Andrew Jones has made that I've reviewed. That said, I can't wait to finish this review and the sound demo and move on to another speaker. Like, that's just it. RP600Ms, the Klipsch RP600Ms, were a speaker that I was sent to by, sent by Klipsch, and like, here's a new one. And I actually love the RP150Ms, which I bought myself. And those things, 
no matter where I put them, no matter what I played, I was super impressed by them. Everything. Impressed. I'm fucking impressed. And these... I'm, I'm struggling to understand my... What, like, okay, I spent $600, you know, your brain's sticking over, but why do you love them? Well, they have really impactful forward mid bass because of that front port. So when you kick up to kick up something, that's Refrain Boy from Mob Psycho, and I nearly died just now. Let's lower that a little bit, just a, just a touch, just a tiny taste. So you just did that, that sound across, and it was left, center, right. It didn't smooth. There's no smoothness between the two, and they're impactful as fuck. Like that front port and these drivers, they're in, they're mm, they're mm. and everyone always complains. Zio, you listen to shit too loud. But if I lower it and slowly raise it up through through the notches of volume, which I should be using that preamp, but the remote's all the way over there, and I can't possibly be bothered. Um, it always sounds even quiet. It sounds loud and intense, and I I feel like. Like I started this review, if these were a pair of um, Atom Studio monitors, these would be a great pair of Atom Studio monitors. Ironically, um, just two days ago, I had the Atom T8Vs up in this room. I was trying to get all the I got like five speakers to do. Those are the first ones I want. I got with. And those speakers, while flawed, I don't think those speakers work as studio monitors because they're too much fun. Atom T8Vs, big 8-inch, $300 a piece, so the exact same cost as a pair of these, but self-powered. You hook them up, and you're like, wow, and then like the treble comes in, and they're smooth, and there's depth, and it's like, this doesn't sound like you're supposed to mix or monitor on this at all. This sounds like you're supposed to just enjoy music on it. What a terrible monitoring speaker, but an amazing speaker. Fast forward to the Elax, and this should be the speaker that you sit there and enjoy, this should be the audiophile speaker, and it's just boring. Boring. I mean, <laughs> it's like a technically correct, it's technically perfect. 44 hertz and up is just probably smooth as butter frequency response graph. But I don't want to listen to them anymore. This is the, I, have to do, I had to redo this review to say that. I had to redo this review to say that. They image weird. And they have they don't add anything to the sound, which to some people that's gonna be your bread and butter. This is someone's favorite speaker. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that while this might be like double mo actually no, this would be if I do this analogy correctly. These speakers are vanilla, the most vanilla vanilla, like perfectly vanilla bean, no added sugar, no added concentrates, it's perfect. And when I get ice cream, I kinda want mint chocolate chip. Because I wanted to, to, you know, I love vanilla, first of all, I'm just a lie. If you ever have to get me ice cream, just get me vanilla. But I mean, just saying, these are so vanilla. They're a very crisp, very accurate vanilla. But I, I, want, I want something more than that when I'm listening to music on it. I, I'm not, I don't, as much as I love my, well, actually, my Normans are still, my Normans are neutral, but I still like them better than this. Yeah, I don't have a set of headphones that I don't like love. That is just so neutral that it's just like, oh, perfect. There's always got to be something to it. And I can't fall in love with these. Jeff Buckley. Like, those highs are just, like, amazing. They're literally, literally amazing. They're like, how did you get them to be so accurate with a soft dome? But they're only in the middle. They're just a big puddle of them in the middle. Very deep, very deep. I have the frozen OST in Japanese, just don't ask. Frankie goes to Hollywood. That is so... These almost, you know what? These almost at high volumes, and I'm gonna lower that shit. At I'm going to lower that shit. At high volumes, these sound more like what you expect clipsch horns to sound like than clipsch horns do. They are just focused beams of energy just right at your face. Like that, 
That and a soft dome should not like make me go whoa, but it makes me go whoa. <laughs> Several times while, while setting this up for the last day or two, I've had to check to make sure that my shit's not set to mono anymore. Because when I'm setting up speakers, the way you do this, and I'll give the little lesson. Um, if you are setting up speakers in your listening space, you try to get them measurably the same distance from you. You try to get them in an even room, which this room is not. That wall is there, and that wall has like two extra feet. You try to balance, get the, get the balance level. These are power amps, so there's no balance there, and that is no balance, and that is no balance. So you just gotta get them like close. Then you play mono. And I could switch that on FUBAR. I have it set up for Alt M for mono. And when I'm done, Alt, sounds good. Alt N for not mono, because that makes perfect sense to me. And then I can go from a stereo source to mono. And what that should do is put the image dead center and let you adjust distances. So if I put it in mono and block rock and beats or anything with a violin or something very, very pinpoint is not dead center if it's over there. That means if it's over there, that speaker's too quiet or that speaker's too loud, which means you gotta take that speaker and you gotta bring it forward. Slowly inch it forward or that one, bring it back. You'll slowly start working the center image over until it sounds like it's perfectly dead center. Close your eyes, flip up a few more tracks, open your eyes so you're looking dead center. Okay, take it out of mono, you're good to go. I just taught you all how to set up speakers real quick. All you need to do is have the ability to go to mono or find a track that's mono or take a song, go to Audacity, make it mono, play that, and then go back to stereo. And the reason I'm talking about this is because several times I've had to look. Wait, am I playing in mono? Because it sounds like everything is coming out of the center. It, it, the, the imaging is so uneven where it, it should be spread across this entire front space and it's just like there right fuck you there there's where it is that that anime girl with the the ears and the fluffy tail she's the one even that even where like she is is too far off from where i'm hearing the sound it's just like this ball right in front of me well right in front of me back 10 feet and it's it does not bode well for like enjoyment if you're mis mixing and mastering, maybe that's what you want. But even then, like JBL 306Ps destroy these in imaging. And this has a better tweeter. This has more details shooting out of it than 306Ps. But uh, at least it's at least it moves. These sound like it's locked down. These sound like locked down speakers. Oh, the Flying Circus from um. Uh, the Rocketeer, great movie by the way. And there's, while there is bass, there isn't sub bass. Like I put on some really heavy hitting songs and it's like, all right, it's doing, it's, yeah, okay. Like you feel it, like you feel it. Like the front ports, are, you're chucking, chucking. These speakers chuck, they chuck fucking low end, they chuck treble at you, they chuck. And I don't want to chuck her. I don't want it. I don't want it to be chucked. Don't stop throwing shit at me, please. I want to be slowly wafted sound. Wafted at me. And these, these do not accomplish that feat. So, I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to keep this short. So you, maybe everyone will watch like 80% of it. I don't like the looks. If I go to the website... Okay. If I go to Amazon, I should have up... Yeah, there they are in the darker color. And that looks like an old piece of like furniture. Like, no, no, no. That's an old piece of stereo equipment from like the 80s. Like that could be a Sony TV, a Sony CRT TV from the 80s. So I wasn't fucking buying that set. I was gonna buy this set. So I don't know which ones I hate more. Because either you're getting just a silver fucking perforated thing and the speaker blends in, or you're getting this white thing with the black speaker for no reason, then silver that also doesn't fucking blend in. So I don't like the looks. You leave, I'll leave the covers on it. I love the port in the front. I actually love the way that's designed and the way it functions and how much impactfulness it adds. But, mmm, these have, they have such good, 10 ratings, five and a half, four and a half stars, 18 pounds a pair, or 18 pounds a piece. So I don't like the way they look. And I'm telling you, I personally don't like the way they sound. That doesn't mean you won't like the way they sound. Hell, if you have these, please feel free to go in the comments, explain what speakers you've had before these, why you like them compared to those. 
where are you using them? Are you using them for home theater? Are you using them just for music? I don't think anyone's using these on their desk, but if you're using them on your desk, what are you using them for? Help me understand, because I mean, I'm, I'm my own person. I have tastes, just like I said, I'm a mint chocolate chip guy. I love a good vanilla, maybe a cookies and cream now and then. But it's like, I need, this is not delivering the joy that I, I know I could feel joy, because you know what I do? I take those ELAC speakers, I put them on the floor, I plug my amps back in, the clip heresies come on, and I'm like, yes! Hell, I just finished a fucking cheap pair of monoprice uh, powered monitors for $160. And those impressed me more with their sound than these are. And these are a more impressive speaker, but those still felt like they were trying harder? I don't know. I don't know. I literally don't want to listen to these anymore. And that's a terrible news because he's going to be in the yard sale, which is available to any patrons or subscribers, or subscribers from the 1st to the 10th of every month. Um, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't dislike them as much as I do, but they, they, it's like when I'm you listening to them, I'm always hungry. You know when you're hangry? When you're so hungry, you're angry? Listening to these speakers makes me that for music. Because I'm hearing music that I know and love. And I'm just like, fucking give it to me. And that's how they, that's what they do. And I don't think it's a setup here. I'm using the uh, HC1 Emotivas. I added this preamp last night just to test it out. That's, um, what are you? What are you? You're a Jung San JA1 preamp that I'm just using that for volume because the remote control looks cool. And I'm using an M400 DAC, which I've been using out here for every other speaker. And it's, it doesn't, that's, I assume that's perfect. Nothing, just nothing. I want this review to end. And all I'm gonna tell you is that that wallpaper is available in the description. And if you like supporting videos like this, you fucking, the Zeos likes everything. I don't wanna hate these. Because I know it's mostly my bias against the sound that, uh, that's coming out. And some other people are going to be like, I fucking love these. I don't know what Zeus is talking about. He's fucking crazy. Zeus, the guy that loves everything, buys a $600 pair of speakers that he's going to take a massive loss on in the yard sale. Because of shipping and because he's saying, and, but he loves everything. Um, all they had to do was be like, cool, like, calm. The house sound of, of Andrew Jones is very good. He should make studio monitors for mixing and mastering, and they'd come out perfect. But for actual pleasure listening, it's not my style. This is ain't my style. Ch check out my Patreon and subscribe star. See these videos early. See me rage early. Ask me any questions you want on platform. Whether it's subscribe star or Patreon, I'll try to get back to you. Participate in the yard sales, where these will be the... First to the 10th of the month after you see it. If it's July, there might be a problem with the early August yard sale for moving reasons. But I mean, other than that, you should be able to, to buy these in the yard sale. Unless I somehow have a change of heart. But there's also other things in the yard sale. 10, usually do 10, 12 items. And then if you want to be into the real behind the scenes chat, where this sort of rage comes out on a daily basis in the form of uh, voice messages. Join the $10 Telegram chat tier on Patreon or Subscribestar, and you can, I'll answer all your questions, like, instantly. Well, instantly after I'm done having a review and I unmute my phone. But yeah, 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 yeah. And for, by all means, please comment below if, you've, if you have these, or even better, go to hifiguides.com, and then click the forum button to go to the forums, and there should be an official post for these where you can have an argument with other people. Or, you know, not an argument. It's either one of those is perfectly acceptable. Uh, I'm done. Again, the wallpaper. I picked a real nice, like, like she's holding a heart. And I like she's a cat girl or a fox. Probably a fox. Got the tail thing. So, I mean, yes and no. Yes. And no. Yes. And no. Check out the sound demo, too, in the description. It'll be out tomorrow.